Now some people may say, but isn't there some clear evidence that it is the earth that is doing the turning in the ether? And they would point to the pendulum, which if it was suspended over the North Pole and was swinging backwards and forwards quite freely, then it would be seen quite clearly that the earth is turning underneath the pendulum. Similarly, they point to the bulge at the equator and say, surely the earth is bulging at the equator because of the centrifugal force that extends it at the equator slightly more than at the north poles, at the north and south poles. Surely this indicates that it is the earth that is doing the turning. Now there is a factor known as Mach's principle because he pointed out that the stars, although they are millions of miles away, there are billions of them and they are very large and very heavy. And they have a very big effect upon the gravitation and the movement of various uh, the, the winds in the, in the air and other aspects like the pendulum and the, gra and the size of the equator being larger than the distance to, between the poles. And what is really happening is that as they rotate round, it is they that are pulling on the pendulum and upon the equator and are causing what are known as Coriolis forces uh, that, appear, that occur on the Earth. It is, there is no clear evidence that it is really the Earth that is doing the turning. In fact, that situation was investigated by two mathematicians and they found that if there was a solid sphere inside an external sphere, hollow sphere, and that external hollow sphere was turning, it produced exactly the same pendulum effect and the centrifugal force on the equator that we have on the Earth today. It is the rotating of the stars with all their mass that creates, pulls the pendulum round and creates the bulge on the Earth's equator and causes the Coriolis forces that give us our north and south uh, cyclones and anticyclones for our weather systems. So again, what seem to be proofs of the Earth rotating can be explained in a perfectly normal situation otherwise. Another objection would be saying that Surely the sun, if it's going around the earth 24, once every 24 hours, it would have been flung out to the outer limits of space. It would have been speeding off into the atmosphere, into, into the universe. But again, there is another perfectly uh, acceptable understanding of what is really happening in the universe as we see it today. And that is the factor that the ether is extremely dense, very dense indeed. It's known as Planck density, and it is actually uh, at a density of 3.6 times 10 to the 97 power grams per cubic centimetre. That is an enormous density, but we can go through it without noticing it at all. Rather like a, a swimmer underneath the sea has enormous pressure upon him and yet he's still free to move uh, his arms and his legs and swim through the water. The pressure, in the same way that the density has no effect upon the swimmer and the density of the ether does not have any clear immediate effect upon this earth and upon us moving through it, around the earth. And therefore, the sun, the moon and the stars are rotating around the Earth, very much like corks in a flat pan of water. The corks are floating on the water and their weight is negligible compared with the density of the water. If you turn the water round and start to stir it round the centre, those corks will go round with the water. They just simply cannot help themselves because the water sweeps them round because it is so much denser than the corks. In exactly the same way, the planets and the sun and the stars and, and the moon are rotating around us, being basically swept uh, by the ether as it goes round us. 
they have their own movements between themselves so that the planets are still circulate, circling the sun but the whole system is sweeping round us every 24 hours every day. So you can see that there is another simple explanation of why the earth does not get fun into the far distant reaches of the universe. And so in summary the Sanyak experiment demonstrated and proved that there was an ether the Michelson-Morley experiment showed that we were not going round the Sun. Aries' experiment showed that it was the Earth that was stationary and the ether was sweeping past the stationary telescopes. The Michelson-Gale experiment showed that the ether was travelling around this Earth at 24 hours every day. The uh, Coriolis forces the uh, pendulum and the uh, equa equatorial bulge of the Earth could all be explained by the pull of the stars of, of gravi their gravitational uh, a pull upon this Earth. And finally, the very high density of the ether ensured that the Sun did not spin off into uh, far reaches of the universe, but that all the planets could go round the Sun but the whole lot were constrained by the dense ether and was travelling around us, the stationary earth. As Christians may say, well, what about the, uh, what does the Bible say about all this? Well, two things. First of all, every single reference to the sun always is in the form that the, it is the sun that is doing the moving. The sun is said to be rising in the east and setting in the west and then it hurries round to come back to where it was before. Every reference refers to the sun doing the moving. Now people may say, ah, but that's just accommodating to the visual appearance. But surely God is truthful in his word. If he wanted to indicate somehow that the, it was the earth that was doing the turning and even moving round the sun, surely he would have indicated that somewhere in his perfect word, the Bible. But there is not a single reference to the earth moving. Secondly, how do you accommodate the difference between Genesis 1, in which the earth and the heavens, notice it's plural, heavens, that's I think the physical heavens, and the spiritual heaven at the same time. How can the earth have been created on day one, and yet the sun, moon and stars were not created on to, until day four. What was the earth doing in those three days between its creation and the creation of the sun on day four? Did God have to give the earth a shove to push it round the, the sun so that we have the system that we have today? Surely not. Surely it is God's plan that the earth is the centre of not only the universe, but of his great attention. Because that is where this human drama, and I call it the drama of the universe, was to be played out. Man was to rebel against him, but he was prepared to send his son down here to die for our rebellion against him. This is truly the centre of his attention. And I have no hesitation in believing that the sun moves round the earth. And therefore, there is a perfectly good explanation why the universe is as we find it today. The very dense ether takes those planets and the, and the sun and the stars around with it as it moves around the earth, which is the very centre of God's attention. It always has been and it always will be. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for listening.